All right, let's do some fucking PragerU. So what we were talking about is look at all this. They've got a new one, which we don't get to watch until tomorrow. Um, spamming that emote. Vote, 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 vote. Yeah, vote. But also, mauled, mauled, mauled. Oh, I see. I see. They're that weirdo. We're going to watch instead this one right here. We're going to watch some of these ones and see. I also really, really, really... I really... Oh, they have a preview for it. Let's watch the preview first. I want to see the preview. This one we're going to watch tomorrow after the de after the, the debate. After I go on my debate, we're going to watch this one. But for now, we're going to watch this. Hi, everyone. I'm Eric Eggers, here filming a video Oops. for PragerU. With the 2020 election quickly approaching, there's been a lot of talk about universal mail-in balloting. Is this a good way for America to go? Yes, it is. It just We've already had it. I've got the answer for you in my new video. Be sure to subscribe to PragerU to be notified. Wah, wah. Boring. Sorry, it might have been too quiet. It was boring. It was boring. They didn't even give us anything. Video comes out. Thank you for watching this video. To keep PragerU videos free, why is there? Why are they so low? Donation. This is with maximum volume. They they make their videos so low. Here's a funny thing. Funny thing I've noticed about right winger videos. They have really high production value and always have shit editing. It's like you can't buy, they can buy pre-made things that look nice and they can buy nice cameras, but they can't find editors to do a good job on their things. Probably because they don't like paying people. They like paying for things. It's, I know, right? I don't get it. It's so low. This is on maximum YouTube volume and I almost am at maximum boosting in OBS. So what the fuck? Yeah, it's true. Most editors are gay zoomers. That is actually true. True. So that's probably why. No, no, like, editor who cared about themselves. They might subvert through it. That's possible. We're supposed to be the... Hey, shut up. Let's find out what's next. Let's watch. Let's learn about Christopher Columbus. Because if there's anyone that we want to learn about um, history from, it's Prager U. It's Prager U. Wait, what happened? What did they say? Did they say something bad? Oh. Wait. Gay, wait, wait. Was that the person who said gay editors? No. No. Yes, it's okay. Undo it. That's okay. That's okay. They were joking. Undo the, undo it. That's fine. All right. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. It's all good. It was misinterpreted. Don't worry. <laughs> I understand. Welcome back, gay zoomer editor. All right, let's see if this is loud enough. Ready? You're good. It's okay, Glooby. I understand. I get the feeling. They're already tyrants. I'm not modding you, Peacecraft. No way. Not a not a chance in hell. Maybe someday. Maybe a long time from now. We'll see. All right, let's see. Yeah. Nice. Also, Glooby's an old mod. For Columbus. What you the see fuck? The Look at how low this video is. I can't fucking hear this shit. This is horse shit. Yeah, right no, you don't break the rules, but I'm not making you a mod, Peacecraft. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you can use Kappa. Wait, this isn't leftist audio. This is rightist audio. Are you fucking kidding me? Look at this. I mean, these are workers with I, the city's listen, department. I have had to boost this up to like literally 90% boosting. I don't have the volume master extension yet. I know I need to get that. This is just bullshit. I can't even... It's so much hard to make it louder. Holy shit. Ah, <laughs> motherfuckers. All right, let's watch it. Let's watch this shit. ...of public works. They are pressure washing this statue of Christopher Columbus that sits at the base of the Coit Tower on Telegraph Hill. They're washing off that red paint that covered much of the statue. New video of demonstrators cheering as they brought down a Christopher Columbus statue Woo! in Baltimore. The statue Bring it down! In the city's little Italy neighborhood, and it was then dumped into the Baltimore Inner Harbor. True! The mayor's spokesperson has said that the protection Bye, Chris. of the city's statues would not be a priority for police. Yeah, Columbus is a bad guy. Okay, okay, for those of you who don't know, Christopher Columbus is a pretty big piece of shit. Literally... Went to a land he'd never been to before and captured random people to bring back as slaves as proof that there were people there. That's pretty fucking shitty. But let's listen to how Prager U is going to lie about it. Look at all those corns. Look at all those corns. I do like corns. 
Let's watch Figures, this shit. Like Christopher Columbus are being torn down across America. Here Look at this cucked audio. Columbus. It's so wrong. It's making me so fucking mad. I'm gonna mauled. I'm gonna mauled. I'm gonna mauled myself because holy shit, this audio is so fucking low. That remind us why his statue should remain. Like most educated people in 1492, Columbus knew the Earth was round, but badly miscalculated its size. Ha! Cuck! What a loser! In Spain and Asia. Less than ha! He was, he was off! Look at that! What loser math! What an idiot! Idiot math! Fuck Christopher Columbus. Couldn't even do his math. Corn? Yes, I said corn. True! A ton of no Aji. Yes, I know it is. It's true electric meal. They can't hear shit. And they imagine they, they probably have to just absolutely fucking crank the audio up on their giant headphones so they can hear. <laughs> he didn't even know there was corn. What an idiot. One fourth the actual distance. For centuries, Europe traded with Asia through the overland Silk Road. But okay. the Turkish conquest of Constantinople in 1453 disrupted the route. Columbus okay. expected tons of gold from his easier ocean crossing, hoping to finance a new crusade to liberate Jerusalem. Columbus drifted. See, and then that happens and it's really loud. Thank you very much for the tier one subscription. Thank you very, very much. Deeply appreciate it. Thank you, Glooby. You rock. Let's see if we can, uh, yeah, I know I got to keep it around negative six, but the problem is, is that it, it, it's so hard. It's so difficult. Among nationalities, marrying a Portuguese noblewoman, fathering a child with there a Castilian There we go. I cranked mistress, it up. Seeking English sponsorship for his expl- Sorry, we missed some of this. Sorry, I, I missed some of this. Let's try this again. Crossing, hoping to finance a new crusade to liberate Jerusalem. Columbus drifted among nationalities. Marrying a Portuguese noble woman. So wait, this is why he's a good guy? Or or what? What? I'm, I'm losing track of this. What is this fucking video all about? Fathering a child with a Castilian mistress, seeking okay. English sponsorship for his explorations before sailing for the Spanish queen. Okay. His native tongue, Ligurian, dominant dialect of his hometown, Genoa, where his name was registered Cristofa Corumbo. After four transatlantic voyages, Columbus died in 1506. Yeah! We got him, boys! Everybody, we got him! We got him! Just kidding, obviously. He reached the Asian mainland, never acknowledging he had stumbled onto two unknown continents. He never established long-term settlements, okay. nor explored the American mainland. Christopher Columbus so is dead! Let's get the crabs! Blame Columbus burp, 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 burp. for the devastation of native populations or to credit him with the rise of new world civilization. So they're just shitting on him? They're basically saying he was a boring motherfucker? Is this their way that they're trying to, is this the argument they're trying to make? This is the argument they're trying to make to like debunk leftists who said that Christopher Columbus was a piece of shit who represented for a very long time, um, you know, the sort of uh, colonial spirit. That's a little weird. Never established long-term settlements nor explored the American mainland. I don't know. Let's find out. So it's absurd to blame Columbus for the devastation of native populations or to credit him with the rise of new world civilization. Columbus Day became a U.S. holiday on the 400th anniversary of 1492 and in response to the lynching of 11 yeah, Italian immigrants it by a New Orleans mob. Okay. That was actually, this was actually one of the dumbest PragerU videos I've ever seen. What the fuck? This is dumber than most. Oh well, we did find out. The motherfucker's dead! <laughs> Get fucked, Christopher Columbus. You died. You died in 1509. 1509 is not 2020. Motherfucker didn't even... What? You couldn't last another fucking... What? Two, what, 510 more years? Loser! Wah, wah. Yeah, why the fuck do we need Christopher Columbus Day? Fuck that. Indigenous People's Day all the way. 100%. Okay, but he did establish slave trade and he did butcher Caribbean natives. That's true. He did do that. But he also died in, in, in 1509. What a loser. 
Dead. 1509. Yeah, I was trying to like, wait, how long was it? 500 years? <laughs> math. Hey, I did my math better than Christopher Columbus. That only took me a few seconds to do. He fucked it up and still sailed across the world for like six months to the wrong place. What a loser. What a loser. Uh, yeah, in a couple of states, a couple of states have done uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. Media suggestions. I could probably find you some, um, but not offhand, but I could probably find you some. Let's find another video. That was boring. I wanted a good Prager you. I thought this one was going to be funny and it was stupid. I had to make it funny. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, that's so long though. Oof. Wait, here's one that's called Celebrating Columbus. These losers! They did another one! Is this the same video? What is he this? He ventured where no other man of his age dared to go. No, no. They just said in the other video that he didn't do any of this shit. He saw things no other man of his age had ever seen. That's literally not true. There were literally people there who saw the same things he saw. There were people where he went. How can you literally say that? How can you possibly say that? Also, there were people on his boats with him who saw those things. He saw the Atlantic Ocean for most of his life. Yes! Oh, <laughs> oh no, Alice. Oh no. All right, let's find it. Let's find he out. He discovered a new world. But they just said he didn't do that. For centuries, he was universally admired as a hero. They also said he didn't do that. This video literally contradicts the shit that they just said in the other video. Yeah, also true. The Vikings literally landed centuries before Columbus did. Holy shit. Now, he's widely considered to be a despoiler of paradise. True. An enslaver. True. And a genocidal maniac. True, Prager you. What the fuck? Very true. How could we? I didn't think. Are they gonna? Are they gonna? Are they gonna? Oh no! I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna back back off. Can you feel the corn tonight? I can feel the corn. Yeah, probably, probably Glooby. Well, not the first, because I mean there were people here before that, you know. But yeah, they were probably the first to to find it, as far as Europeans go. Accidentally left wing. Yeah, this is definitely an accidentally left wing. I'm talking, of course, about Christopher Columbus. So which is true? Now this is way is he a too hero long. or a villain? The truth is complicated, as the truth often is, especially when you have to go back 500 years to find him. Oh, it's this guy. It's, the, it's this guy. It's the 1984 guy. It's this guy who doesn't know anything about 1984. I discovered your channel and declare it as a territory of the king. Michael No Megalols. It's Benny, yeah, Ben Shapiro Jr., He's much boringer, though, and dumber. Let's try to get as close as we can. Columbus was born in 1451 in the port city of Genoa, Italy. Yawn. At a time when birth often determined destiny, his origins were entirely unremarkable. His father was a middle- Wait, wait, are they trying to bootstrap Christopher Columbus? ...class wool weaver who expected his son to follow- A middle class wool weaver? He was, oh yeah, yeah, famous, famous, if, fucking 1400s for having the middle class as a concept. Remember that. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. The same path. But Columbus had different plans. The age of discovery was This is literally a bootstrap American dream story. The future Yeah, but it didn't really exist as a as a concept, did it? It would be like you were like a merchant. But that's like its own class. It wasn't really considered the middle class. They're using like super modern terms for that. Yeah, and if you were a merchant, you were very well off by that time. Yeah, it wasn't a term. Yeah. Spoon with a spoon. Yeah, right. Right, Triple H. Or, wait, Sextuple H. I said Triple H because my brain went there automatically. Yeah. Who? <laughs> He's, he's pogging right now at how many lies he's saying. Double Triple H. That's what I got to do. Double Triple H. Belong to the bold. 
and the bold went to sea. Oh, that's cool. By the time he turned 30, Columbus had sailed to Iceland, Ireland, and Africa. Somewhere on his many voyages, he became obsessed with the idea that there was a westward sea route from Europe to India. Mm. But there were no maps to consult, only wild rumors of sea monsters and endless ocean. He put together the 15th century version of a PowerPoint presentation for the King of Portugal. Then lame, lame, oops, lame joke, lame, lame. Where the fuck is this? What? After eight years, Wait, here we heeding go. the advice of his experts turned him down. It simply couldn't be done, the experts told the king. Oh my God. They're literally, they're doing the anti-expert thing. This shit is so brain dead. They're literally, literally, this is the, they're trying to play in the COVID like experts are bad. Experts are real bad. Holy shit, Prager you. That's so, that's such a stretch. Look, it's the liberal experts. Uh-oh. It was pure speculation and an expensive one at that. So Columbus took his plans to Spain. But King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella weren't interested either, at least not at first. Columbus persevered. Wrecked. After eight Wrecked. years, they finally relented. They gave the explorer three small ships. There was a time when every school kid knew their names. The Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. And the- What? What are those? I don't know what those are. Boats? What's a boat? What's a boat? Yeah, their hands were backwards, which is really fucking weird, but that's very on point for PragerU. Year and ah, uh, the good old days when you used to learn about the three boats that he had in his fleet. Yeah. Yeah, I know. They left over that part, of course. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, feel free to ping me later, Lone Wolf. And hopefully uh, I'll see you later. Uh, thanks for being here today. In which Columbus set sail, 1492. Except for a compass and the stars, Columbus had virtually no navigation no, no, tools sorry, I was at his just disposal. Reading something. He was, to mix metaphors, flying blind. He was heading west. That's about all he knew. What a fool! What an absolute fool! Yeah, he was a fucking spoiled rich kid. Here, wait, why is the chat box? The chat box is gone. Let's put it back up. Once the ships left the Canary Islands, they were on their own. They just they just got done. We just got done watching a video where they unromanticized it to, to make him sound like a loser. And now they're trying to make him sound like he's a he's a fucking bootstrapping. He started with nothing, but then he sailed to America and everything went good. His crews stayed loyal for the first week. Yeah, they did. But by the third week, they had lost their nerve. Columbus, however, never lost his. Oh, look at him. By sheer force of will, he kept his men in line. They're selling, they see they're, they're leaking in that fashy strongman rhetoric. His dumb sailors who were starving and suffering, you know, he, he put them in line with his strong force of will and the fact that he probably had a comfortable cabin to stay in and food that was reserved for the captain that they didn't have. But by the third week, they had lost their nerve. Columbus, however, never lost his. By sheer force of will, he kept his men in line. Finally, after 10 long weeks at sea, on the night of October 11th, Columbus spotted land. He called it San Salvador. Today, we know it as the Bahamas. There, Columbus dick. and his men encountered the Taino tribe. The first encounter between Europe and the Americas went well. The oh, look, they're all so happy. Taino were curious and helpful. Columbus was emphatic that his crew treat them with kindness and yeah, respect. Yeah, okay. Lest you think that Columbus stumbled on the Garden of Eden, the islands were also inhabited by the Caribs, a tribe of cannibals for whom... Wow! Wow! Damn, they're gonna do it! They did it! You called it! Ace, you called it! Holy shit! They're like... Just so you know, there were there were bad ones there too that we hate. Holy shit, this is so pathetic. According to Pulitzer Prize winning historian Samuel Elliott Morrison, babies Babies were a delicate delicacy. Oh come on. Holy shit.
were a delicacy, or in Morrison's words, a toothsome morsel. Like every place else on Earth. A Pulitzer Prize winning liar! Yeah, as it turns out, lots of people have won prizes and also written other dumb bullshit. This happens all the time, by the way. Just real quick, before we go any further, this happens all the time. I told this story before, but it's literally multiple times in history have there been uh, so-called historians, colonial historians, who've just straight up made shit up. In fact, it's really funny because um, in a place I used to live, one of my friends was involved in a conflict between a city's historical society and the local university's history department. The city's historical society was a very high, a very rich town, largely staffed by literally rich people who happened to live in the town trying to beautify it. And they had put up a hand painted sign that was teaching the history of the town. It talked about how a Native American leader in the area killed and like chopped the noses off and chopped the ears off of some kid, which this was completely invented by the English who were at war with that native leader. That native leader was in literal constant communication and very good friends with the French who also were operating in that area. And if you follow the history of the French who were actually involved with them and not the English who were trying to kill them and take the land from the French, you will discover that nothing like that ever happened. That it was written by English people to make the natives look scary and bad so they could get more troops and money and arms to go take this place from the French. So it's fucking hilarious. It's hilariously common for this to happen. Oh, wait. Hey, there you go. Cosmic Sean, you kind of touched on one thing. It's very common to make these things up. It's so fucking annoying. They, this shit gets made up all the time. There's all kinds of rumors about bloodthirsty savages that go all over the place. And it's weird. It's almost like... The people who wanted to justify killing and hurting them made it up and just said it and there was nobody there to tell otherwise except for the natives who had already been demonized as monsters. Weird how that works, huh? Weird how there's a big part of actual real historians, people who are actually interested in learning about the past, where they have to be very careful about who is telling the history and who you trust because people will lie to make themselves look better. That's a good question, Mylan. We can talk about that another time. We're not doing, talking about veganism right now, but yeah. Let's, let's continue watching. Let's hear what else they have to say. In every time in history, the local peoples were a mixed bag. Some good, some not so good. Hmm. Upon his return to Spain. Some good, some not so good. I wonder what their motivation, I wonder what Prager used motivation for trying to frame this is. Some good, hmm. some not so good. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what they could be trying to imply here. Yeah, weird, huh? Upon his return to Spain, word of the Italian explorer's successful voyage quickly spread throughout. Yeah, those those natives they enslaved were no angel. Jesus Christ. Europe, a new world had been discovered, and the old world would never be the same. Columbus was a man meant for the sea. On land, he was easily out meant for the sea. Yeah, maybe they should have should have fucking dip, dipped him in, given him a little dunk or two. <laughs> the Caribs aren't sending their best. They're sending cannibals. They're sending rapists. And some, I assume, are good. Maneuvered and betrayed by professional politicians and bureaucrats. <laughs> this is a Biden. They're trying to shoot at Biden here. He was outmaneuvered by lifelong politicians and bureaucrats. This is so pathetic. It's... They don't gain anything, Electric Meal. They just shot it down in their newest video. Talk about having your cake and eating it too. Holy shit. Bureaucrats. It is on their dubious... Yes, bureaucrats. Ah, yes. Famous, once again, famous 1492 Spain. Famous for their widespread bureaucracies. A concept that didn't even exist at the time. Ah, amazing. So you did a bit of research on this Eli Elliot Morrison fellow that they've cited, and it turns out he's known for straight up lying about the Battle of Savo Island. Yeah, it's almost like, you know, it's funny. 
you can find just about anybody to agree with you and you can just cite them and say fancy things like esteemed historian. There's a thing, this is called weasel words. Um, in fact, it's talked about on, on Wikipedia that you have to watch out for weasel words. Things like some people have said or a famous historian has said because the word famous can be defined by anybody. You can define famous as anything. Yeah, mmm, steamed historian. Yeah, this is so fucking goofy. Yes. Career politicians like the king and queen. Yes, it's very slimy. This is a slimy tactic. This is why I've never understood how the right keeps talking about the left's white guilt. To me, being honest about your history isn't guilt. Lying about it, trying to absolve your ancestors of any blames feel, of any blame feels a lot more like guilt to me. Yeah, it's pathetic and insecure. They're too insecure. They need to keep telling themselves that they're... They, they need to keep telling the thing. The reason why is because they want to keep telling to themselves that I am the heir of the white heritage of the conquerors of the earth. I am great. I am great. Even though they, just like everyone else, is being crushed to death under capitalism and under the right wing fucking government here in the United States. But they need to keep telling them we are the blood of conquerors. I've inherited the blood of Christopher Columbus. It's cope. It's massive societal level cope. Because they're too insecure to actually care about the truth of history and acknowledge that, hey, colonialism is horrible and we shouldn't fucking do that sort of thing. And our ancestors did that and we shouldn't. That's what they should be thinking. But they're fucking cowards and they're weak. Never, ever let people sell you the idea that the right is strong. The right is built on insecurity completely and utterly from the bottom up they're built on insecurity the need to constantly tell themselves that i am the heritage of legends my daddy's daddy's dad was a conqueror regardless of what my life is maybe i'm slaving away in in at a mcdonald's under and voting for donald trump because he he tells me that I'll, that it'll he'll keep out the the immigrants who will steal my job or whatever that no matter what their life is, they need to believe that they come from a line of, of, of amazing, wonderful people, of legends. But it's, again, pure cope. It is pure cope. And that's like 90% of the fucking right-wing ethos in this country. ...self-serving accounts that modern attacks on... Wait, did I miss something? Hold on a second. Maneuvered and betrayed by professional politicians and bureaucrats. Outmaneuvered and betrayed by professional politicians and bureaucrats. Outmaneuvered? What do you mean? They act like he was being fucking, like he was being sabotaged. When in reality, people just didn't want to pay for his stupid bad math. And he was wrong. He was wrong. They literally said in this video, he was fucking wrong. Oh my God. It is on their dubious, self-serving accounts that modern attacks on Columbus's reputation are based. In his own day, these attacks made the explorers... Oh, let me read these two comments real quick. Let's read these two comments. Laughing my fucking ass off. No, 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 no. See, what actually happened is that he demanded the natives' resources and mutilated them if they refused or fought back and then loaded up their female children to traffic and young men to sell into slavery because Columbus had spent so much of the gold trying to prevent a mutiny by the crew that he had to show something to the king of Spain. True! It's almost like the entire goal in the first place was to exploit people who didn't belong to that country. Like, literally, that is the entire goal. The entire reason why you want to set up a trade route to India is because... Weird. India had been colonized. That India had been taken over in a lot of places by colonial nations. Fucking governments. By their fucking empire. Do you realize that? Remember the term? The sun never sets on the British Empire? Funny. It's like... He was trying to sell this to the British Empire. Why? Oh, because then you can bring in the riches that are despoiled from, from India and from, the, from Southeast Asia. Weird take, but a lot of ignorant white boys get sucked into white power rhetoric because, so, because of some of the same low self-esteem things that make, that make black guys who like 
anime get into sexist homophobic shit. So obviously, one comes from a position of societal power, but it's like that same injured max masculinity entitlement to oppress others. One just involves an in a misdirected mea culpa. I mean, that's true. Again, insecurity is is fucking part and parcel of a lot of right-wing ideologies. They're insecure in who they are, so they need to constantly bloviate about how amazing they are because of some intrinsic trait that has nothing to do with their life or their own accomplishments. It's because of their skin color or their ethnic heritage or whatever. It's bullshit. It always has been. Life of misery. Columbus was not blameless. He sold natives into slavery. Ah, look at them. There they go. They just fucking skirt right over that one. But the explorer did not invent slavery. Ah, look at that. Downplaying it. They didn't downplay. They didn't downplay it when they were trying to make the natives look bad, huh? What an argument. Well, yeah, he, he did capture random people and sell them to slaves. I sell them as slaves which was common around the world long before and long after Columbus. Hmm. 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 Columbus's time. As for the charge of genocide, there was no genocide. Yeah, yeah. True, Cousin Shaq. True. Genocide. There were atrocities. Oh, thank you, Slade. Most occurring after Columbus was dead. Hmm. There were atrocities, most occurring after he was dead and gone, but his actions literally made it possible. ...and gone. There was also widespread... Oh, okay. Hey, hey, Wagonator. Get the fuck in the Discord. Let's do a debate. Come on. Come on in here. I knew we would get one. Come on in here, Wagonator. Don't fucking back down. Get on in here and get on a debate. Come on the show. Let's have a talk about this, because I would love to blow you the fuck out of the water. Come on. Come on on. Put, your, put up or shut up. Come on. Come on, Wagonator. Get in the Discord. Get in the Discord and jump in. Stream Collins, and I'll bring you in. Come on. Come on, Wagonator. Come on. Come on in. I'm waiting. You in there, Wagonator? Are you in the Discord yet? Let's find out. I don't see you in here, Wagonator. Get in here. Come on. Get on the show. Let's have a talk. I would love to debate you on this. Come on. Get on. You in here? Let's get everybody in here. I'm, I'm make, giving everybody their roles. I got to do this. I got to automate this because we're getting so many people in the Discord. Come on. Come on. Come on, Wagonator. Get in here. I'm waiting. I don't see you in here. Come on, Wagonator, get on the show. Everybody wants to see, hear your take, and I want to fight your take. This is your chance, your chance for 15 minutes of fame. Come on, six, 76 people watching. Come on, get in here. This is your chance. Come on. Oh, I'm ready. I, li I live for this shit. Are you kidding me? Hmm? Come on. I'm waiting. Wagon, come on, get the fuck in here. You're gonna do stupid, uh, do stupid uh, fucking iPhone shit in chat. Come on, come on, get in here. Where are you, wagon? Wagon, wagonator. Come on, come on. Join the Discord, Wagonator. It's right here. We do, we encourage difference of thought. But if you're going to say something stupid, then you got to be able to back it up. So come on in here. I can feel the corn. Yeah, you can prove this dumb, liberal, leftist idiot how wrong she is. Come on, this is your opportunity. You chat in my chat. He said to calm down. Yeah, I'll corn him right up. You got this. Yeah, I'm a stupid commie. Come on. This should be easy for you. Come on. Get in. I'm waiting. I'm waiting, wagon. Come on. Nah, let him be. He's already riled up. Are you going to be that weak, wagon? Are you going to be that weak? You come into my chat. 
You watch my show. You say stupid shit. Yeah, debate me. Get on here. Come on. Come on, wagon. Get the fuck in here. What's this? Yeah, let's do this. Here we go. Warriors, come out to play! Get in here, Wagoner. I'm waiting. Warriors, come out to play. Warriors, come out to play. No, this is the Warriors. You did wake up to a chud. Yup. So Wagonator, you gonna show up? You gonna you gonna you gonna show up or you gonna cower it out? It's really funny. It is it is very much like um, somebody who would be making apologia to colonialism, who to be insecure and unwilling to back up their own argument in the chat that they were heckling in. Come on, come on, Wagonator, come on, get on in here. Why is a debate a win-lose thing? There can be an... Oh, wait. Here's the thing. It's funny. Let me just go back. Let me just go back and read you back your own content. Your own comment. Let me just uh, bring that up real quick. Where is it here? Most of the world still has slavery. When you throw away your iPhone built by forced child labor, you can lecture me about being a mean explorer. You say, in my chat. So, that's why. Get on in here. Come on. Let's have a nice exchange of ideas. Come on. Come on. This is such a weak look, Wagonator. This is such a weak look. You look so weak right now. There are 73 people right now laughing at you at how insecure you are in your own heritage. You won't even defend your own argument. How sad. How pathetic. I know, I want to hear, I want to hear it too. I want to get blown the fuck out by this one. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, Hannah raided in here. Hey, Oro, welcome, welcome to the chat. Um, Hannah did raid in. We're waiting, this guy came in here and wanted to say some dumb shit. Wanted to insult my content and also show that he knows jack shit about what we're talking about. And currently, he is chickening out massively. Looks like he's a coward. That's the second one. Yeah, I know. It's funny. It's really funny. It's easy to come in and snark and shit talk the, co the content that you're literally watching and spending time in the chat of. And then you chicken out the moment that anybody challenges you because you're too afraid to actually step up here and debate. All right. All right. I'm going to give you a couple seconds and then I'm going to kick you out of here, Wagonator. You going to get in? You would, but you forgot your Discord server password. Make a new account. Make a new account. Here you go. Listen, I'm giving you a chance. Make a new account and jump in. Just name it Wagonator2 and jump in and we'll talk. This is your chance. This is your chance. If not, you're going to have to be making a new Twitch account if you want to keep watching. Because I'll blast you right out of here. Come on, make a new account. Get on. It would be a waste of time, no mind changing, and you get banned in about eight seconds. Wait, why would you get banned in about eight seconds? Is it because you can't resist saying slurs? Is that why? Is that why? Is it because you can't resist saying slurs? Is that why? Is that why you get banned? Wait, wait. Yes, we can. Oh my goodness. What do you even know? Half of my channel is debating people. It's you who's too afraid to engage in the arena of ideas because you're afraid that a woman is telling you that you're wrong. If not, you'd make a you'd make an account and you'd get in here and debate me. But you're too afraid. You're going to instead make stupid m m fucking m motions towards, "Oh, uh, oh, you're bad for you're lecturing me for telling me the actual truth about history." You can't disagree civilly. 
let me ask you something. What is civil about you rewriting history to make white people look better than they were? Huh? What is, what is civil about you coming into my chat and implying that I'm lecturing you and then refusing to actually debate? Revisionism isn't civil. So come on in. Let's have a civil discussion in the marketplace of ideas. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe I'll learn something. This could be your chance. I'm giving you time. You said you would. If you would, make a, make a second account. Make a new Discord account and join. You have the Discord link right here. No excuse, Wagonator. I'm only going to give you a few more seconds. And then I'm going to get you the fuck out of here. You came here to troll? Oh, great. Then I guess I can uh, fucking bl ban you then. Is that is that true? You came here just to troll? So you're you are a coward. At least you're an open admitted coward. What a loser. Listen guys, here, let's get a screen cap of this. Can we grab a screen cap? This one goes into the fucking uh this one fucking goes into the into the record books. Here we go. Wow, I'm going to love that one. Gets challenged. Oh, guys, guys, I, I came here to troll. Not to get into a cringy voice chat with some SJW about how white people are so mean. Hey, Wagonator, this is it. This is your chance. Get your fucking ass in here or you're out of here. Come on. Come on, you little coward. Come fight the SJW. You know you want to. Ah! <laughs> you're a loser. You're a coward. Look at that. That's all you got. You got nothing. You won't even chat. If I'm such a dumb SJW, it should be easy for you to come in here and make fun of me, right? Oh, guys, I forgot the password. Look at you. Pathetic. Alrighty. Get the fuck out of here. Bye bye Wagonator. You tried. You tried and failed and embarrassed yourself. You are an embarrassment to your views. You are an embarrassment to your entire ideology. Pathetic. Goodbye. That was fun. Do you see why? I never, nobody will ever debate me. Right wingers never debate. They're too fucking cowardly. They come in here, they say shit in the chat, and then I ask them, come debate me. Let's talk about this. And they never fucking do it. Cowards. Literal cowards. Yeah, but Peacecraft, you're different. You're not, well, okay, you are kind of a right winger. I'll give you that, but whatever. You want to debate me? Somebody wants to deb wait, cousin Shaq, you want to debate me? Oh hey, figuratively nobody. Thank you so much for the five gifted subs. Holy shit! Thank you so very much. That is incredibly, incredibly generous. You're amazing, figuratively nobody. Thank you so very much. Look at all these people who just got ones. Shumeki, Ellen, you've got one. Void Harpy, Sansol, uh, Demikin, you got one now too. You want to fight me? Listen, peace. You are a little bit of a right winger, and I will give you props. I'll give you props. You do debate. You'll they'll d debate me on the best burger joint in King County. That would be hard. I haven't gotten to eat much since I got back here. Um, I used to really like Habit, or not Habit. Um, not Habit. Um, uh, Herfies. Herfies was really good. Um, Burger Town is pretty good. Um, there's that other one. Fuck. There's a a uh, little one in Capitol Hill called um. What was it called? Why can't I think of it right now? Little Willie? Little Willie something like that? Yeah, Burger Town's good. Yeah, Burger Town's great. Herfies is good. I haven't had Katsu Burger. I had, um, fuck, what was it called? It was called, hold on. It's, um, Lil Woody's. Little Woody's. Woody's in, in Capitol Hill. Really good. I haven't had Fat Burger. Um, Woody's is real good. They have great, they have really good nacho fries there. I got to try Katsu Burger sometime. I've ha I have heard of them. Um, I don't know if Burger Town is even still open. I went there once and it was good. Um, they actually had really good, uh, like, like they were very much like, like home style burgers. Like it tastes like a burger you'd make at the grill and home. It was really good. Yeah. Woody's it's in the gay, it's in the gay neighborhood. Of course. Yeah. It's really good though. Woody's was great. And also they have a really cheap breakfast burger. It's fucking amazing. American fast food. It's not fast food. Their nacho fries are actually like legit. They like use real cheese and everything. It's actually great. Dick's is pretty good, but I don't like, I don't like love them. That's the only thing. 
Bob's Burgers down at Wonder Wharf? Never had it. Wait, is that the is that the, was the one from the show? <laughs> if I debated as a right winger, would I be your chat in a debate on slavery? <laughs> Lol. Would I beat my chat? Uh, I don't know. I I might be able to. I might be able to. I think I could out rhetoric my own chat if I wanted to. Um, if I wanted to pretend to be a right winger, I could probably beat. Um, I could probably beat people if I wanted to. It wouldn't be hard. Um, the thing is, you just have to not get mad. The problem is right wingers can never get mad. I mean, they can never not get mad. They always get pissed every time. They get so pissed. And, and, and then they lose their shit and they can't actually make their argument. The way that you win as like, if you're trying to pretend to like play the devil's advocate or whatever, is you just play completely um, distanced and you just appeal to the fact that that's just the way that it was and there's nothing you can do about it. And that people were just doing the best at their time. And you can be really super manipulative with your rhetoric. It'll be logically stupid and morally stupid, but you can win in rhetoric if you do that. Woody's isn't a barbecue place, no. They do burgers and stuff and sandwiches. Oh, there's a there's a Dick's in Kent? I didn't know that. That's cool. I should go there sometime. You know who knew slavery was wrong back then? Enslaved folks. True! True! Oh, it's, it's closer to Des Moines? Oh, okay. That's probably why I didn't know about it. Chick-fil-A has moved into this area now. There's a bunch of Chick-fil-A's opening up around here, which is weird. I like I actually Chick-fil-A actually does have the best chicken sandwich on the market, but pfft. hey, figuratively nobody, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Much love to you and have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for your generous donations today. Genuinely makes my day. Thank you so much. You will not ever go to Chick-fil-A. Yeah, I've been there a few times. Uh, but Popeye's is actually worse than Chick-fil-A, unfortunately. I know. Chicken sandwiches are made of evil. I've never had Bojangles. Um, no way. No way, Alice Marie. I'm sorry, it isn't. But, but, but Popeye's is more ethical slightly. <laughs> like, moderately. Nah, I don't like Popeye's. Well, that's fine. Chick-fil-A has some good food, but... Um, honestly, my favorite fast food is A&W because A&W's burger... Their, their, like, Papa Burger is actually really good, and they have cheese curds. It's not. No, it's not. I'm sorry. It, I don't I don't like Chick-fil-A. I don't like Chick-fil-A. But Chick-fil-A is the best chicken around. It is unfortunately true. It's just true. It's horrible, and they're a horrible company. But the best plant-based burgers, hmm, I don't know. That's hard. I've had a couple. I mean, yeah, if I'm ever in Fredericksburg, Virginia, there's no way I'll remember it. What are my thoughts on religion? I have a lot of thoughts on religion. I've talked about it here multiple times. We can have a discussion about it sometime. Yeah, cheese curds are amazing. They're horrible for you, but they're so good. Unfortunately, that is true, I rate Lump. I have heard that the Canadian a and is, like, amazing. Like, they have a whole bunch of different ones. I do like the Impossible Burger. I've had the Impossible Burger a couple times, and it's pretty good. I've also had the Beyond Meat, but honestly... This is a hot, this might seem like a hot take, but when it comes to non-meat burgers, the type of burger that I like is, um, I actually like the black bean burrito, like, uh, the black bean patties. Yeah. It is a little bit seasoned with hatred, that's true, but then again, so is every fast food. It is true that they are all seasoned with hatred and exploitation. Sucks. Yeah. Hmm. The Irish Brigade. <laughs> Your dad got banned from there for life? Uh-oh. What is my cup? This cup is just a... I don't even know where it came from. I picked it up, I think, at like a... Um, I think I picked... It's like a hospital cup. I picked it up at a hospital one time. I don't even remember why. Yeah! True, gay fish! Measuring cup? No, it just has a fluid level. It has like a fluid level because it tells you how much you've, you've drank. It's like good for keeping track of water. Like, you know, like they give you it at a hospital. When you go to the hospital, they give you these cups because like you need to drink a certain amount of water every day to stay hydrated. So I just kept it and it's, it's like insulated. So it works great. And it's very big. So I can put soda cans in it without 
it overflowing. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if soy was actually... Oh, God, that would be amazing. Yeah, true! Typical lefty sick-ass cup in a Kingdom Hearts. This isn't even the sickest cup. The sickest cup I have is my, um, is my cactus mug, I think. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Listen, let's do it. Let's do the brainstorming. Um, because it's almost at hour four, and let's finish. Here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do, Cash McCrash. We're gonna do the rest of the PragerU. Then... We'll do a little bit of brainstorming, and then we'll raid out because um, I gotta eat some food in a little bit. I did. It's not. I, well, I see what you did there. You got me. You almost had me, but I caught it. Yeah, I see. I see what you did there. Yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of brainstorming. Um, well, Cash McCrash has asked us um to come up with ideas for how you could make a church more diverse and inclusive, and so I thought that that would be a really cool thing to toss out to the chat and see what ideas people come up with because I feel like that would be really good and it's an opportunity to actually impact the world in a positive way. So let's finish this uh this Prager video, then we'll do that. Yeah, so it'll be pretty cool. But let's finish this video first, because I want to do that. No, not that. Not that. We're not suggesting that one. Red intermarriage between the Spaniards and the natives, which eventually led to the people we now call Hispanic wait. or Latino. It's unfair to focus only on Columbus. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Did I miss something? It's also wait a second. Now widespread intermarriage between the Spaniards and the natives. Wait, what? Yeah, it was forced. It was literally forced. This was a po the Spaniards literally, holy shit, they forced intermarriage. Are you fucking kidding me? Holy shit. That's like well-known piece of history that they just play right over. God, PragerU is so bad. They're so bad. Actually led to the people we know. Oh yeah, of course, of course, Cosmic Sean. It literally, if you're forced to ra to marry someone, that is absolutely non-consensual. That is absolutely rape. Absolutely. Holy shit. All Hispanic or Latino. Forced assimilation, yeah. It's unfair to focus only on Columbus's- Look at this motherfucker. This guy right here is willing to lie about shit like this. Led to the people we now call Hispanic or Latino. It's unfair to focus only on Columbus's sins. It's also unfair to judge someone who lived 500 years ago by today's standards. His how about how about judge him by those days' standards? He was still shit. His own assessment of his actions is he does much look more like revealing. Marco Rubio. Let those who are fond of blaming and finding fault, while they sit safely at home, ask, "Why did you not do thus and so?" Well, there's a reason why Columbus has so long been celebrated. Why so many statues, schools, towns, cities, a national holiday, an Ivy League university, and even a country bear his name. Wow. Wow. It's this simple fact. Hey, thanks for the when follow. When we celebrate Columbus, we celebrate the arrival of Western civilization to the Western Hemisphere. And if you can't celebrate that, it says much more oh, about he did a debate with Hassan? I should watch that. than about history's greatest explorer. I'm Michael Knowles, host of The Michael Knowles Show, for Prager. Yawn, don't need your self-promo. Let's do one more Prager U, and then we'll do the brainstorming session. Hey, thank you for the bits. Really bad to, uh, really, really too, too bad the Bible is pro-rape and slavery. Otherwise, I don't think shit would be as fucked up. Uh, yeah, we can talk about that. I mean, I wouldn't argue that, I wouldn't say that it is that. I would say that there are uh, hugely problematic elements of the Bible, but that it shouldn't be taken liter literally and that you can still find value in such a thing, though I do tend to be very much against organized religion for a lot of reasons, but we can talk about that a bit later. Yeah, exactly. Let me grab one of the, oh wait, is there, oh boy. Uh, 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 what? Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, true, MX Vivian Wolf. True. A 20 minute safety video. Uh oh. What type of shit are we talking about in there? Oh no. All right, shoot it my way. Maybe we'll watch it.
All right. So this is going to be War Apologia, is what I'm guessing. Um, Just raw, no, no jokes about it, War Apologia. I mean, it's titled The Middle East Problem. You would think that an organization, that an organization that is run by an openly Jewish person would avoid using this type of language. You would really think that, wouldn't you? Well, I mean, uh, I don't know about that exactly, Riot Girl Callie. Um, keep in mind. Anyway. Hey! Two months. It's been two months already. How time flies. Hyun, indeed how time flies. It is wild how fast time flies right now. Thank you very much for the two months of subscription. Much, much appreciated. It is because of your generosity that this show is possible. So thank you so much. And I'm so happy that you're a part of my community. Is that audio coup? No, it's from Pathologic, actually. Pathologic 2, to be specific. Um, yeah. But it is from a game. You were close. Yeah, okay. Maybe we'll check that out. Let's keep. Let's watch this uh, War Apology video and see what they have to say. It's probably the easiest conflict to explain. Hmm. Yeah, we should be grateful. One side wants the other side dead. Israel wants to exist as a Jewish state and to live in peace. Yes, as we know, states, states are the, the, the flag bearers of peace. Yeah, this was, uh, yikers. Israel also recognizes the right of Palestinians to have their own state and to live in peace. Hmm. Problem is that most Palestinians. Didn't, oh my God! This is literally. This is literally anti-Palestinian. This is. This is not. This is not even just. This is anti-Palestinian. The problem is that most Palestinians do not recognize the right of Israel to exist. This is anti. This is anti-Palestinian propaganda. What the fuck? This shit. This is like arguably. Oh my God. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it's funny. It's almost like literally to this day, Israel is con like the state of Israel, mind you, the state of Israel, mind you, is colonizing areas of Palestine. Holy shit. Hey, see you later, Alice Marie. Thanks for coming by and hopefully we'll see you again soon. I uh, hope you have a wonderful night. Thanks for coming by. The thing is, I think that most of these, um, I think that most of these types of videos are like background noise. People watch it and they go, uh-huh, because it confirms their worldview and they, it just continues to just sort of like pat, pat those, um, those confirmations into place. Remember kids that American fascist propaganda goes down. Mmm, so smooth. Bingus. Yeah. My uncle supports Trump because he moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Do you know why they did that, right? Do you know you know why that is? That is because of evangelicalism. Like, that's because of the pressure of even. I mean, it's not only because of that. But a lot of it is because of the pressure. The reason why that policy is popular in America is because of evangelicalism. They believe that Jerusalem needs to be the capture, the capital, in order to to uh yeah to start to start off the end times so that's why that that policy has so much popularity here in the united states did i see the seventh calvary cavalry turned up in michigan i did not no what happened was that was when when did that happen the really fucked up part is prager you videos are literally meant for evangelical parents to show their homeschool kids yes they do do that they have a thing called fuck i can't remember what it's called it's like kid prager the prager you kids or the prager you teens well let's take a look at this oh 
oh cool, the seventh cavalry showed up. I'm not even surprised at this point. Holy shit. This interview the shot came from is wild. This the the sheriff speaking out in defense of the Wolverines, cops and clans. Oh, let's watch this video real quick. Damn. He knows these guys. He, quote, has never had lunch with them or anything like that, but has ran into them at some of these rallies. He said they've always been nice and respectful to him, adding they deserve wow. a fair trial. Michael and William Null were among the first charged Thursday. For yes, those are the ones who attempted the, the ad abduction. Governor Gretchen Whitmer. The brothers from Plainwell and Shelbyville are now charged with providing support for terroristic acts on top of weapons charges. Their West Michigan homes raided Wednesday night. I uh, was able to hear them say, FBI, have a warrant for your arrest. Come out with your hands up. A neighbor of William Null spoke with Fox 17 under the condition of anonymity. They witnessed the raid and were shocked hearing what it was related to. I had heard that there was a lot of militia people. Their right to do so, but um, to the extent that we just found out last night, totally surprised about that. The Null brothers had ties to militia groups and were frequently seen at local demonstrations, hmm. including at this rally in protest of Governor Whitmer's stay at home order held last May in Grand Rapids. You can see William Null on stage alongside Barry County Sheriff Dar Leaf, a guest speaker at the event. Oh, so he was straight up, he was like right, he was right in with those guys. Yeah. Uh oh. Thursday night. Well, I haven't read everything up on it. I've, I've got other duties oh, to do. He's a little nervous. Investigation. So I, I was shocked. I did not see this coming with those guys. But still, uh, we can't convict them in the news media here. They do have a right to a fair trial. Well, duh, but that's not that's not saying anything. Cops and clan. True. True. Oh, the Chuds told me they were anarchists. Yeah, they always like to do that, don't they? Doesn't know of Null's alleged involvement in the plot and doesn't have any regrets about sharing a stage with him. Do you have any regrets from being on stage, sharing a stage with a guy who's now being charged in a plot to kidnap the governor? Well, it's just a charge, and they say a plot to kidnap, and you gotta remember. It's just a charge. It's just a charge. Okay, dude. Or that are they trying to kidnap? Because a lot of people are angry with the governor. And uh, they want That's to some shocking apologia from the sheriff. So are they trying to arrest or was it a kidnap? There's the guy. The dude with like a Rorschach mask. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. That's wild. Attempt, because looks like still, looks like a fucking Rorschach felony, mask. You can make a felony arrest, and I think it's MCL seven six four point four or something like that, point five somewhere. Yeah, he probably knew. And uh, it doesn't say if you're an elected office that you're exempt from that arrest. So wait, I wait, wait. I'm sorry. Back. What? You can make a felony arrest, or was it a kidnap? They want her arrested. So are they trying to arrest, or was it a kidnap? What? He's trying. He's defending them on a citizen's arrest charge. Holy shit. No, I haven't seen the series yet. No. You can still, in Michigan, if it's a felony, you can make a felony arrest. And I think it's MCL 764.4 or something like that. This guy totally knew. He's got this all fucking prepped. This guy totally fucking knew. Five, somewhere on there. And uh, it doesn't say if you're an elected office that you're exempt from that arrest. So I have to look at it from that angle. And I'm, I'm hoping that's more what it is. In fact, they, these guys are innocent until proven guilty. So I'm not even sure if they had any part in it. I'm not even sure if they had any part in it. Wild. Wild. What the fuck is happening? Oh, no. What the fuck is happening? Oh, no. What the fuck is happening? Oh, no. God damn it. Sorry about that. I accidentally fucked up one of my tools. Give me just one second here. <laughs> it started replaying all kinds of shit. God damn it. Where's my chat? I need my chat back. There we go. All right. All right. I'm back. Infinite stream loop. Sorry. I, I accidentally turned one of my tool panels into uh, into a infinite stream loop. That's fucking wild. That's absolutely wild. The 7th Cavalry are, uh, cavalry are literal neo-Nazis that wear the Rorschach mask. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I mean, I, I heard that there was a gang in there and I, I that's what I thought it was, but I just have never seen the show. I didn't know that it was like actually tied to the Rorschach thing. Holy shit. You can citizen arrest cops. I don't know. I can't I can't advocate for that or not. 
<laughs> yeah, it's having a, bre a mental breakdown from having to watch that. Yeah. Holy shit. That's wild. Anyway, back to PragerU. Let's continue. So just, again, where we were was... Thanks for sharing that, by the way, uh, Vivian. Thanks. Um... Yeah, what happens if you arrest, resist citizen's arrest? I don't know. Weird. No, it's a it's a worthy one, Vivian. Don't worry about it. It's totally worthy. Um. Yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um. But yeah, this is just anti-Palestinian propaganda at this point. If tomorrow Israel laid down its arms and announced, we will fight no more, what would happen? And if the Arab countries lay down their- Listen to this shitty mixing. Now it's loud as fuck. Now it's loud as fuck and you can't even hear what he's saying. Their arms and announced, we will fight no more. What would happen? In the first case, there would be an immediate destruction of the state of Israel. Okay, so he's just saying things. He has no evidence for this. He has nothing. And mass murder. Okay, really? Citation needed? of its Jewish population. In the second case... So this is the sort of thing, this is the sort of video that just straight up, like, falls into the category of raw propaganda. There would be peace the next day. The Middle East problem is simple to describe. One side wants the other dead. If it didn't, there would be peace. Thank you for watching this. Wow. Thanks for the thanks for the great video about the Middle East problem. The Middle East problem that literally didn't talk about almost any part of the Middle East except for the struggle between Israel and Palestine. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying at the beginning, Gayfesh. Literally. What a worthless video. God, they're not even doing they're not even doing funny things anymore. They're just doing boring bullshit. Holy shit. They contradict each other in this video and this video. They did two videos about Christopher Columbus, both of which were bullshit in different ways. And they contradicted themselves. Oh, this is the one with Tulsi. This is the one with Tulsi. Fuck you. How are we, how am I supposed to YouTube poop this?